This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello there, John Solberg here, your host for the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. And I want to let you know, today's episode is being brought to you by The Butcher Shop, purveyors of highly sought after 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets, and as always, handpicked just for you. The Butcher Shop has been retailing the finest meats for the past 15 years. Every week, they're shipping out competition-quality meats to many of the biggest teams in the competition scene across the nation. Simply put, teams who use the Butcher Shop win, and they win often. So you say you're not a competitor, but you have an eye for the finer cuts. Great news, the Butcher Shop is shipping some of the finest prime, dry-aged Australian Wagyu and Japanese Wagyu steaks to people just like you and me who aspire to be the kings and queens of their cul-de-sac. The Butcher Shop always has Berkshire, Compart Duroc, Allegiance Duroc, and Prairie Fresh all-natural pork in stock and always hand-picked just for you. Now, you might be saying, John, all this sounds great, but what about some exotic stuff? Well, rest easy knowing the Butcher Shop can get you your next elk steak or camel roast, and they will ship it out promptly. Yes, they can get you some camel. So let's review. The best competition briskets, check. The best pork selection, check. Giving you better overall options to cook in the backyard, check. So give the Butcher Shop a call today, 850-458-8782. That's 850-458-8782. Mention the Barbecue Central Show for 10% off your entire order each and every time. You can also interact with them on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Butcher Shop. Shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. The Butcher Shop, home of the 100% Australian non-crossbred Wylara 9 Plus Briskets. And here's what's going on in today's show. We're going to take a trip back to 2010. Greg's going to talk to Rod Gray about Wagyu Briskets. <laughs> You know, Rod, we talked about this when I had you on for the uh, Beef Brisket Roundtable a little bit. Uh, and it's the overall popularity that seems to have come up, probably thanks to uh, Myron Mixon and the first season of uh, the Barbecue Pitmasters show, that being that Wagyu beef or that American Kobe beef. Are you still not dabbling around with that at all? I really had hoped that you wouldn't ask me this question because, actually, I had forgotten I had said during... <laughs> <laughs> during that uh, show that I couldn't even spell Wagyu. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so uh, a friend of mine gave me a brisket, a Wagyu brisket, and actually had spelled it on there three times. The first two times, you misspelled it and crossed them out. <laughs> and I cooked that, and it was a pretty great brisket. And uh, the problem I'm having this year, Greg, is it's really difficult to find large briskets. And if you, if you dial back to that show, you realize that I like to cook a big, big brisket, and I'm having a lot of trouble finding those. So... Based on some some gentle nudging by a couple of my good friends, I have delved into the Snake River Farms uh, Wagyu stuff here recently. Um, Kim Wineski has been helping me quite a bit, and uh, so I have been cooking some Wagyu stuff. Now, I've heard from some pretty credible sources there on the competition circuit that use the the Snake River Farm briskets that they're a little bit on the smallish side. Are you not having the same issues? Well, I haven't so far. Now, now granted, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm only about six briskets into her, uh, maybe eight, um, but everything's been great size so far for me. So if you order so if you order two briskets, you're going to be amazed at my knowledge here for a second here, Rod, but if you order two briskets, you get them shipped to you, you're in 168 bucks for two briskets, uh, including the shipping, of course. So to some people it's out there... Outrageous, isn't it? I know. To some people are like, holy crap, I mean, that's a lot of money, plus I'm going I'm in with entry fees. I'm one of those people. In your uh, limited experience now with these, is it worth the investment, or can you obviously still win without it? I still believe that good food is good food, and I don't know that we have to have that quality of meat. I will tell you that I've been successful with it. I will tell you I've only won brisket twice this year, and one of those two times was with with a Snake River Farmers product. I think I'm still trying to... um, to get it all figured out in terms of cooking that product. I know some other guys. In fact, the truth is, I think it would hurt your head to know how many people are ordering those kind of a brisk, those kinds <laughs> of briskets and cooking them in competition. Um, so do I, do I believe in it? I believe, in the, I believe that Snake River Farms or any of those Wagyu guys have really great quality meat, and I believe that uh, you start with a good product, you finish with a good product. 
Uh, am I 100% sold that you have to have that product? I really can't answer that today. So what, 2000, 2001, people were hardly injecting anything. You fast forward to five, six years, everybody's injecting everything on earth. And then the new trend is now this uh, Kobe American or Wagyu uh, beef. Is it a trend? Will it die off in a year or two? Or is it something that potentially has legs to stay on for a long time? That's a really great question. I don't really know the answer to it. I really thought, and my answer to that is this, you know, um, Heritage Breed Pork has been around for probably five or six or seven years, and it, it tried to gain some popularity uh, along those times. And I really thought that eventually we'd be looking at paying a bunch of money for some Berkshire or some sort of Heritage Breed Pork, and that's never happened. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't know if this is a fad um, spawned by the first season of Pitmasters where you see one of the Pitmasters carrying a big black box on his shoulder or whether this thing will really take legs, and pretty much that will be the standard the way we cook chicken thighs for the most part, in competition. I really can't answer that. Um, I'm as curious about it as you are, for sure. Where uh, will Pellet Envy be competing next? Um, this weekend, we're headed down to Springdale, Arkansas, to compete in a Ronnie Kate Smoke on the Water event down there uh, at the Naturals Ballpark in that area. Just so um, that's where we're headed this weekend. And I do want to say while I have you, I'm, I'm trying to, to create a grassroots following for a new day I'm establishing called Bring Your Brisket to Work in Your Pants Day. <laughs> Um, to see if I can't get that worked out for sometime in the fall. Are uh, you setting up a website like uh, bigmeatpants.com or something like that? <laughs> you're, you're giving it away, Greg. How did you know? How did you know that without me telling you? See, I'm a master marketer. Uh, the uh, Smoke on the Water event, is that the one that you have? Is that the one you've won twice in a row? Um, this is a new one. This is the first year event. It's in Ronnie's series of events. You know, Ronnie Cates um, has a little promotion going on where he's got a little team of the year race within a, within a race going on. So we're in the lead in that. Um, there's a little pot of gold at the end of the rainbow should we be lucky enough to make it all the way. And so we're just kind of sticking with that for this weekend. We'd intended to go down there since he announced it in the spring, so we're going to stick with that. Um, I think he's down a little bit on team count. I think it would be a great chance for somebody to jump in and probably have a really great shot at uh, at least winning back their entry fee because – He's got a lot of money down there, and he's got a little bit sparse on teams. And Pellet Envy will be in Springdale, Arkansas, this coming weekend. Rod, we are 55 minutes in. You held through and brought some great insight. And, of course, I always appreciate the honesty and the candor. Good luck this weekend. You have the karma, so certainly no surprise if you happen to win, as it uh, has held true for uh, many, many teams uh, over many weeks this year. Uh, continue success, and uh, we'll look forward to the next conversation. Greg, thank you very much for having me. I love your show. I don't get to listen to it as often as I want to. I did get to listen to it tonight, and honestly, I had really intended on bringing some heat, but uh, you beat me to it with your opening <laughs> remarks about Pickmasters. Kind of set me back on my heels, and I was a little less confident than I thought I would be because you were strong, buddy. But a uh, great show. Love what you're doing for barbecue. Keep it up, and, uh, and uh, thank you very much for having me on. All right. Take care, Rock. There he is. Pickmaster. Tell it in, dude, baby. Imagine that, 2010, not knowing how even how to spell Wagyu, just starting to use it, not sure if it would ever take hold, getting out their Blackberry and calling Snake River Farms. <laughs> I, it seems like such a foreign thing now. Um, it wasn't that long ago, though. It, was, it wasn't a thing. But anyway, that's uh, you want to hear the rest of this interview, I let Rod do a little tease. This is a great interview with Rod Gray from the beginning. Head over to the bbqcentralshow.com. There'll be a link in today's show notes to take you to this complete episode. I appreciate if you go give that a listen. And until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.